controversial subjects with the facts can be tense. But we are a sub science here to make things make sense. So All right. today, we're talking about boners. The science of erections, what actually happens down there, regardless of your sex, because actually everyone gets erections. Uh, when you're aroused physically, what's going on, a little bit of the anatomy. We'll talk a little bit about like what you can do to make sure that you're having healthy erections. How to get <laughs> yourself a harder boner, folks. <laughs> as well as what goes um, awry when there is dysfunction down there and what happens with age and these kind of things. So, uh, so an erection is defined as the enlargement and stiffening <laughs> of the penis. I love how it felt like you were racing me there. You're like, so the erection is defined. Well, I was like, this guy's going to keep going here. What's going on? <laughs> um, yeah. So the stiffening and enlargement is important. It's really a fascinating little appendage. Mm -hmm. One interesting thing that scientists cannot agree on is, okay, obviously your penis is an external part of your body. Yeah. And so is your scrotum. Mm -hmm. But a lot of scientists argue that your testes aren't because they're contained in the scrotum. But other people huh. say that your testes are because they're like kind of outside of the, you know, the, the rest pelvis. of the body. Yeah. yeah. So do you consider your testes internal or external? I mean, to me, they're external, but uh, yeah, yeah, me too. Of both. But it's like, an, yeah, it's like I know my penis is external because like that skin you know, it's, it's hitting the raw air if I'm naked, whereas my balls, there's a scrotum protecting them. I guess, but that seems a little, like, pedantic. Like, These? it feels like, okay, well, like, the inside of your penis, then, is not external. Not external. Yeah, yeah, that's fine. Like, my, <laughs> like, literally. Like, the cavernosa. Yeah, exactly. My corp. Hora cavernosa <laughs> is internal, but my penis is not. Um, but anyways, those are just the deep questions that scientists are asking at all times. So, yeah, it's kind of like obviously erections seem funny, but they're extremely important, obviously, to reproduction. Mm -hmm. Like with you can obviously come without an erection. Sorry, that's not obvious, mm -hmm. but it helps when you have an erection. So it makes you realize the body like getting an erection is so important because it's how you, you know, help create offspring. Yeah, totally. And it can be used to just have fun as well. Whether yeah, by I ever diddled it. Or with others. Do we want to talk about obviously like it requires stimulus in yeah. some kind of way. So at baseline, the penis is primary under sympathetic control and is flaccid. So on average, 23 hours of the day, your dick is flaccid, which kind of, I was like <laughs> a whole hour of bone. That's like what the science was like. Uh, three different studies said that. Okay. There's I mean, an well, hour, an hour <laughs> and on average, an hour a day, you have a boner. Yeah, well, if it, like when you're sleeping, it happens a lot. Yeah, that's true. And I, bet, I bet the majority of it comes then. From nocturnal boners? Yeah. And then obviously there's some that's like, you know, just comes up during but the like day. But like sometimes it's like, yeah, I wonder if I'm just like working and like something happens and I get a boner. And I'm not even counting it and thinking that I have a boner. Probably, but like I, <laughs> it's maybe different because we work at home. I feel like yeah. you'd be much more aware if you were like in a public yeah, setting true. or like I, I had to work like in an office or something. Walk around with my hard hog working at home alone and there's <laughs> okay. no issues. Okay, <laughs> okay so <laughs> yeah, so the actual stimulation to get a boner, there's a lot of different ways that scientists talk about this, but it kind of comes down to two most specifically, which is that one is involved with this your brain first, mm -hmm. Some people say the largest sex organ in your body <laughs> is your brain. It ain't your clit or your dick. Um, yeah, so it's like you see something that arouses you. You smell something that arouses you. You could even just like close your eyes and just imagine. like imagine like Chris Hemsworth or like Pamela Anderson for all you millennials <laughs> out there running on a beach and get an erection. Or you can actually do it the other way around where like, they use the example of like your glands penis. Mm -hmm. Glands means acorn. So like the top, the <laughs> tip of your dick. Which, the lips, the teeth, the tip, of, the tip of the dick. You know that? Yeah. You know no. That? What's that? Oh, you don't know that? Okay. The, you're not no. a theater kid. That is a nice little warm up. It usually goes the, lip. the lips, the teeth, the tip of the tongue. But I oh thought I'd flip God. it on its head and say the lips, the teeth, the tip of the dick. I truly <laughs> thought that you and musical theater like. It's like, okay, well, we all love dick. That is the gay agenda. Exactly. It's like, if you go into musical theater and they're making you go the, your lips, the tit, the tick of the, the dick. Anyway. So you're trying to Sorry. say that there is a Yeah, you physical totally derailed sensation. that. There's the physical to start that then goes to your brain. So like, for example, you like rub your little acorn, your little glands penis or your penis against like 
the washing machine by mm-hmm. mistake and then all of a sudden it sends a signal through your nerves to your brain and mm-hmm. then all of a sudden whoa you're stimulated yep but and they can be also broken down even further to other yeah something that's really fascinating about that sort of end of it so say you have like physical touch and that triggers something called the pudal pudinal nerve and that you know, is connected to your spinal cord and sends signals to your brain to kind of like let you know what's going on down there. But what is interesting is that end of stimulation that doesn't start with your brain, even though your brain's notified. Dick first. It, it, yeah, dick first or just genitals first. Your brain isn't necessary in that sense. So you could still get an erection. Like people who have spinal cord injuries, they may their nerves may not be sending the signal to the brain, but they could have an erection. So oh, it's interesting slay. because you don't quote unquote need your brain necessarily yeah. to have an erection, although many arousals come from the brain first as well. Yeah. So other ways to define the stimulation could be visual, which is like starting with the brain, mental starting with the brain. They define those as different. Visual being you see something with your eyes, mental being you shut your eyes and you dream of Pamela Anderson. (laughs) Physical, which is the touch. And then there's also, as we said, the nocturnal nighttime ones. Most of the time when you hit REM sleep, you'll have a boner. Mm -hmm. And actually now I'm like, I'm getting up why it adds up to an hour. My REM sleep boners. Exactly. And so I'm so excited to talk about the um, health of main, maintaining your health and how you can keep your boner healthy because wow. there's a study that came out this year that's kind of related to that. So okay, I'm just we'll gonna get, there, get I'm just gonna get to the erection then so we can get to that because yeah, I let's really want to know about my boner health about it physically, right? That's what you want to talk about. Yeah. Now? So if you like are to look at your penis, everyone <laughs> unzip and look. Actually, I was looking at diagrams and then I did look at my penis <laughs> and I was like. Damn, that is so weird. Because when you look at the diagram of a penis, okay, so they like cut always like the pelvic area of someone with a penis in half and they always include the anus Mm -hmm. because, you know, right near the anus is that prostate. Mm -hmm. I love the word epididymis. So like your testes are hanging down below. There's the epididymis, which is above it. Then the vas deferens are the two that like go to the prostate. Then it eventually goes, you know, the sperm or P is just sort of, delineated in the urethra at that Mm -hmm. point and then out of the urethra there but your dick is made up of like the two important tissues that will create the boner Mm -hmm. so the corpus spongiosum which is a a harry potter spell yeah corpus (laughs) spongiosum and everyone's like oh i have such a heart on it won't go away (laughs) there it's it's the like spongy tissue near the urethra their urethra runs through it and it's like what keeps your urethra open during boners like in order to get semen out. Yeah, yeah yeah because it's like there's a lot of pressure building up yeah you don't there. want it to close up because all those blood vessels yeah. are like expanding which does happen to your veins like it ex- the blood yeah. expands in such a way as just to close the veins which traps blood in there and that's why it like remains inflated yeah there's like <laughs> veins at the top of your dick you know how everyone's like the mars bar Looks like a dick with a vein. Oh, Is it the Mars I didn't bar? know everyone was saying that. Every, every time I'd buy a Mars bar, it's a little bit of a visual stimulus and yeah, I get a boner. Um, but the, Mine's there are, more like, oh, Henry. You mean you <laughs> like turds? I'm kidding. <laughs> okay. That's disgusting. But, oh, Henry's actually looks so much like a turd. It's like fascinating to me that they like were able <laughs> to like, get on, like take off because I do think they're delicious. Also, Tim Horton's. This is CanCon, Canadian content. Tim Hortons brought back the Walnut Crunch, which also also looks like dog shit, but tastes amazing. Mm -hmm. Anyways, we're back, side note. (laughs) So on the top of your dick, there are actually a lot of veins that when you get the erection, they close. And so that, again, stops the blood from leaving and hopefully keeps your rock hard boner for hours, Mm -hmm. folks. But the corpus spongiosum, Mm -hmm. oh no, sorry, the the corpora cavernosa is the main ones. There are those two sort of like, depending on the size of your girth of your dick, on like, if you were to cut it like a sausage in yeah, half. Yeah, they're kind of like on the top <laughs> sides. Yes. And they're, with, they're what fill up with the most blood. There's two, there's arteries in each one. There's two yeah. arteries. And so what happens is your spinal cord essentially sends out a signal down to your dick region. And it's all about nitric oxide release. And so nitric oxide in these erectile tissues, it's a vasodilator. So it causes blood to flow into the penis. And what's also, I think, kind of interesting is that nitric oxide causes smooth muscle cells to relax, which essentially like it's 
too complicated to explain here, but it keeps your calcium levels low in your dick. That relaxation, almost the flaccidity of the smooth muscle cells is what causes the erection. And, well, doesn't also the smoothness or relaxing just make more space for the blood to fill? Yes, but it's an interesting way because it's like the actual adjectives for like vasodilation. Mm -hmm. And in this case, smooth muscle cell, smooth muscle cells. cell relaxation causes boner. Right. I feel like a lot of people would assume smooth it's muscle like cell relaxation would be flaccid and right. something else would be boner. Yes. I just kind of, I kind of loved that. Like, scientific language is like oh yeah you need the relaxation of the smooth muscle cells to engorge and grow mm -hmm. and fill with blood yeah it's just kind of like a counterintuitive little like yeah vibe. No, that, i think that happens a lot because even uh, i don't want to misquote it this is in one of our videos but i'm pretty sure it's norepinephrine um when you're sleeping and part of the reason you get like morning wood or nighttime erections there's actually like an active mechanism of norepinephrine that's like stopping blood flow from entering oh, but interesting. in REM sleep that turns off which like then allows blood flow yeah so it's kind of like of course it is an oh, active cool. process but it's interesting in the same way that it's actually the inverse of what you think yeah. by turning something off like your body's actively stopping a boner at all times in, yeah. in one perspective and then when that turns off at these certain moments then it like the like floodgates open basically yeah and I do definitely like feel like I am getting older and I can't wait to talk about your like giant boner research <laughs> but I, I just like do remember like so much like as like a teenager just like truly like walking like a gust of wind hitting my crotch and just getting an absolute heart <laughs> like it was just like it was crazy like it was actually a problem or like being in math class yeah. and then like rubbing my dick weirdly against the desk and then be like well i'm hard for like minutes on end and like hopefully the class doesn't end whereas now i don't have that issues i've never like i'm so hard i can't <laughs> go <laughs> like it's just like damn like, no you're right like it is kind of crazy to yeah. think back on because as you become an adult it's like even if it accidentally starts happening, you can kind of stop it pretty quick. I'm not saying there aren't moments when you're just like, this oh yeah, is inconvenient. no, yeah. But as a mm -hmm. kid, sometimes you're yeah. literally like, I don't want this, and it's going to be like here I'm for five stuck full with a boner. Minutes. I'm like, I haven't had that Maybe since 10, 22 and you're years it old. Under a yeah. desk. Like and if I need to get rid of a boner, it's easy now. I remember talking about it with friends in like grade school, and someone was like. I just realized I went to the front of class and our teacher can literally see on like, you know, when you have a desk in front of you, it just feels like you're concealed. But when you're like far enough away, like you can see people's oh legs. Oh my God. There's no, was, no, but when someone's like, they know when we have boners. That's insane. Okay. It's like, how big was that guy's hog? Cause like, no, because if you have you a boner sitting down, it's not like a cartoon image of like the <laughs> Simpsons image of a boner where it's just like, it's like, you know what I mean? Like a boner when I you're sitting down that. is... No, I'm just like laughing at this guy thinking that there's just like boners all over That's the world. That's what everyone thinks when they're young. You get freaked out. Not not that he thinks hey, there's a million boners. He's just like, oh, when I have an erection uncontrollably, someone can possibly see it. I, I see. just always imagined just that he it was can. like hidden. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah no. I just Moving don't. on. No, well, I'm just like, it was kind of a creepy image to think of a teacher. Yeah, you're right. I didn't really want to. I was like, trying to. Like, you're right. You're right. I, I am sorry. Like <laughs> I didn't mean. <laughs> I was thinking of myself as in that age bracket. Yeah, yeah. Reliving no. that like fear of being caught, you know? It's but, a, now I kind of miss the fear. Yeah. And, and most ED is now understood to be physical, not like psychosomatic. Like in the past, a lot of people were yeah. like, it's all. That can still be part of it. I, I, I can go through. There's like six main causes. Yeah, yeah. ED. Oh, do that, do that. Well, first I wanted to mention now that we've talked about the erection of the penis, Female erections are also a thing, and oh yeah, so true. like the clitoris and the penis are homologous, homologous, homologous yeah, yeah. Um, structures, which means, homo, yeah, means that you know they're they're kind of like the same, and uh, the female erection works in a similar way as though their um, clitoris is like in this place of the penis, and so like that blood flow comes to there. Obviously, it's not getting as big as like a. a an erection on a male, but there's like blood flow that enters there and they are functional. Like studies have found that when females are turned on, the chance of like procreation is higher. Oh, wow. Which is really interesting. So yeah. boners rub boners is a good thing. Yeah, exactly. Like, and stimulation of that for females is like this really sensitive area, even though there's only like a small part that is actually 
outside the body that you would be like yeah. the tip of the clitoris and the tip of the dick is also super mm-hmm. sensitive like yeah. you know people always say that like exactly. it actually is there's and they so don't mean like nerves. the literal tip but just like the end of it right yeah no the tip it's called oh, the, 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 the glands tip. penis oh. the acorn um, glands means acorn okay but i also was going to say like the pudinal nerve and stuff like that like that function is similar for females there can be a mental stimulation or a physical stimulation it can go to the spinal cord and send <laughs> messages to the brain it's also not entirely necessary there can just be physical stimulation which can lead to blood Whoa. engorgement and that kind of thing nitric oxide is also vasodilating so huh. this happens in everyone, everyone. basically wow mm-hmm. Um, okay, now go into oh yeah, so we ED. Were talk about, yeah, we won't we won't linger too long on ED, but I just thought it was interesting because obviously this is a concern for me because we're also getting into our thirty. <laughs> yeah, and it is more common as you age, but I think that's also the I want to say confluence, but I don't know what that word means. What does confluence mean? I meant to say like the convergence of many factors is actually what I was trying to say. I don't know. Confluence sounds like it could mean that. Can I type it in and we're gonna like you yeah, know, yeah. Gonna, eyes are gonna learn with us. I'm Come also on. running to get my coffee, so oh. be right back. Okay, con, how far is it? It's so far away. You can still hear me. Don't have a boner. Don't worry. Definitely. Oh, my God. I'm having so much trouble. Confluence. Confluence. The junction of two rivers, especially rivers of approximately equal width. An act or process of merging. I guess that could work. And no way. To me, it was like this idea of converging multiple risk factors. As you age, there's more and more risk factors. Yeah, yours is metaphorical. And know what else confluence is? Your goddamn vessels in that corpus. (laughs) Caverno said to give yourself a boner. Okay, continue. (laughs) So, like you said, um, psychogenetic, which means stemming from the brain, is a possible cause. But many, many, like, it's not necessarily, like, politically appropriate. Not politically, but what do you say? Like, appropriate to say to someone, like, it's just all in your head. If you're having, like, ED, I think in the past, they, they did might used have just to said, think like, that. you are having problems with your yeah. brain. You're just anxious. You're just nervous. Of course, being nervous, being anxious, like, having yes. an issue and having it in your head is going to impact your body's ability to be aroused in the first place and to, quote, unquote, perform. But that's only like one factor out of six. And it was sort of like pre-1940s, 1950s. They only thought it was mental. And then science As, yeah. kicked Started in and realizing, was like, okay. there's a lot of factors. There's another one called neurogenic. So that means you could literally have spinal cord issues. You could have uh, like communication problems between your nerves. There could be something physically stopping you from getting erections. Yeah. Okay. Then there's hormonal. So for men, like testosterone does play a role in arousal, but there's also like you could have ab- abnormal hormonal levels outside of that. Can That can just impact your arousal levels. Um, vasculogenic. This apparently is the most common. Yeah, so. this is what I was... Yeah. Thinking of. So it's like just blood flow issues all relating to that mechanism of getting blood in there could be linked to like high blood pressure, heart disease, diabetes. Those often link into vasculogenic. Is that how you say it? Vasculogenic. Um, and then the final two are drug induced. So you often hear like if people are on antidepressants, it's a lot harder to get aroused. You may not feel the same way. Huh. Excessive alcohol, smoking, and other drugs can whiskey inter- dick. Yeah, can interfere. Yeah, it's very common for people to be drunk and have a hard time being like physically aroused. And I think that one to me gives like Tinder date vibes. It's like I can see people mm. who are single and using alcohol as like a social lubricant. Like a nerve depressant. Yeah. But I can imagine being other like, parts damn of your- it, like now it's harder to get hard physically. I can see that one yeah. being frustrating and maybe the beginning sort of like stages of okay. Like, yeah, well, there's probably both ends because if you're too nervous, you might not be able to get aroused. So you drink to like get rid of those nerves. But if true. you go too far in the other direction, now you've actually entered into like a physical or drug induced um, issue. And oh, then yeah, that's interesting. The final one was aging and other diseases, but a lot of this can be caused by a mix of all the other yeah. things, right? Like the older you are, the more likely you might have a condition, a disease, you might be on drugs, you might have hormonal levels that are out of balance. Like there could be many different factors as you age. It's not to say it's necessarily everyone's going to suffer like ED as they age, but it's more common. And I think that also, I was actually too nervous to do the studies about ED. Is <laughs> there, what do you mean, do sorry, the studies? There were surveys in two of the studies because they were kind of being like, once you're in your 30s, like yeah. ED, like, everything we talked about on this podcast, <laughs> alcoholism, mental health, it's a sliding scale. Mm-hmm. And they were just like, do this survey to find out what scale, like, like essentially I can, know, on the I just like are. know that it's going to be like, you're this much on the spectrum. I'm, like, <laughs> I'm just not ready to hear that I'm on the spectrum for ED, but like probably their whole argument is that 
the erectile dysfunction has been very misleadingly explained, especially in pop culture. It's kind of like, you can't get hard. Yeah. There's just like this man walking around. You're like, can't get hard anymore. It needs Viagra. It's like, no, it's again, a sliding scale. There, mm -hmm. there will be times and places and reasons that could be physiological, mental, all these things coming together. Yeah. And that a lot of people will suffer from it and also not suffer from it like throughout the year, throughout yeah. their lives. Like, and it could be related to not just not getting hard, but how long can you yeah. last? Yeah. How hard does it get? How good does it feel? Like lots of different variables that, yeah, it's not just the full inability to get an erection. It can be like conditional. So under certain circumstances, you're having issues um, with certain people. It comes up more than with other people. So like, I think, yeah, like everything, in science through the years, we realize like spectrums are a much better way to measure. It's not an on or off switch. And it's better that people for their own like mental health and sanity, because I think a lot of people do struggle with erectile dysfunction and it's embarrassing to bring up and they don't know when it's like the right time to bring it up. Knowing there's a spectrum lets you kind of go, oh, maybe I'm catching early signs. I can talk to my doctor and see if it's something. Could it be related to my health? Like, do I just yeah. need to like exercise more or do I a have lot of, blood pressure problems? A lot or, of dudes will get on that hormone test. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, every, that's the one that people, a lot of guys are like, well, it's my testosterone. It's my testosterone. Which and then for like, some people it is, but a lot of yes. times nowadays we're realizing that's being like very like give it out very easily to say like, Oh, you probably have low testosterone. And then a lot of men actually don't have low testosterone. So <laughs> go watch and listen to our podcast about testosterone replacement therapy. Cause we explain all that information there and it's, it's super juicy and interesting, mm -hmm. but I am like, okay. Like do you think that maybe ED is like scarier for straight, men with penises because I was thinking about like think when you're so. gay, you get to have all different types of sex. You get to be, mm. you could be passive. You could I be okay. active, passivo, activo, top, but like there's something about that. <laughs> I'm, I'm like, my bilingual boyfriend, <laughs> but no, there's something about like me kind of just thinking like when I go into a sexual situation, there are a lot more options for me mm -hmm. where I can imagine the pressure of like the rock hard boner of the right. man with yeah. like, just like, I'm like, oh, that, that, there's more pressure there. I think it's, did our dog just barf? Is he okay? Okay, we, he just <laughs> barfed because we were talking about, bon no, he's fine. He's okay, fine. He just made a weird sleeping. noise. <laughs> Speaking of boners, he hasn't had one in years, but <laughs> looks like a lipstick. Do you know what I mean? Like, it's I kind of. I think it, I don't know if I can qualify which is worse. I think there's different pressure, worse, different but. pressures in different communities. No, I know what you mean. Like, on the one hand, I think you're probably not wrong to as as like a man in a heterosexual relationship the pressure might be on you and it might be harder to break that stigma if you are having issues to like use toys and like get into different spaces where like your erection isn't the only thing that matters yeah and maybe in queer spaces that is more acceptable like yeah. i'm not that's not what i want to be pleasured or i want to give give someone something rather than get yeah. something all these kind of things are more open in the queer community but I think as a gay man, there's still a lot of pressure to like be able to be aroused and use your penis. Lots of Viagra in these gay parties. <laughs> but yeah, I think all men struggle with. Yeah, that. yeah. Okay. I just thought like, you know what I mean? It feels like there's less options. Yeah. You could guys. take on a different role. I agree. But like, it could still be really challenging if you're uh, a, like a cis man who identifies as a top and then is st struggling with ED. Yeah, see, a cis gay man. A cis gay man, sorry. Yeah. yeah, I just mean like if you're struggling with ED, but you yourself aren't wanting to be a bottom, then you'll still be struggling. Oh, yeah, from I that, forgot you know? I was the first king, <laughs> and I forgot that that's not just what everyone is. Yeah, okay, true, true, true. Yeah, it's just like there's some, there was something in the, some of these studies I was reading, the survey based one, about women being like actually kind of relieved that their sexual like prowess isn't physiologically shown. I was like, that's mm -hmm. an interesting mm -hmm. part about being a man. Yeah. There's a lot of male privilege. And I kind of was like, Oh, interesting. Yeah. Like there's something there that is like actually kind of spooky. And like erections are as we're getting older, like it's an interesting part of aging yeah. and probably like existential thoughts because yeah, they're so your body in a different way. Yeah. And, and it's mm -hmm. so like culturally like boners are gone. Mm -hmm. And I'm going to get into my research about the penuma, which is a literal addition to your penis through surgery to make it bigger. Oh, like to grow, like to make insane. your penis bigger. 
Yes. Okay, why don't, don't we do that? Now. And then I'll talk about the alternate, which is like how to keep your boner healthy. Without, not, not to grow. Without it, but. horrible surgery. Okay, let's talk about surgery. So obviously we're talking about like size, increasing Penile size. girth augmentation, okay. which is like probably could have been its own episode, yeah. honestly. But it's it, I just read this insane New York art, article about it, and I bring it up all the time because it's just so disturbing. But my biggest takeaway is that the people who are getting – this surgery where yes, they cut open your dick, almost flip it inside out and add this like spongy mesh like thing that in theory should grow and shrink with your boner. Uh -huh. So it's like this newer thing. It's by this scary guy, the Thomas Thomas Edison of penis. Why surgery. is he scary? Because it's, Okay, it's called Penuma. It's invented by James Ellis. He's a urologist who's decided to make his career off of this surgery that is like extremely problematic because a lot of people have had issues. Of course, like anything, some people are super happy with their new girthy dick. Other people <laughs> have serious issues, mm. pain, can't even pee, have to get it taken out. Like all these yeah. risks are really high. Uh -huh. And so it's like, it's, it, and there's all these loopholes they've used through the FDA to have it be approved. Even though like, if you read the article, you'd be like, this does not feel like a safe procedure. Okay. And he is just like a creepy vibe. But there was a GQ article that kind of, I think, really messed with a lot of people because it wasn't that critical of this thing. And a lot of people signed up. But my biggest takeaway was that it increased during COVID. And through a lot of, lot of psychological studies, I think porn has a big influence because mm. most people who are getting the surgery have average to above average penis sizes to mm. begin with. Yeah. Yeah. I'm pretty sure I saw something that like, like the average penis size is erect i think is closer to five inches like maybe five and a half or something like that but most men think it's much bigger yeah well because you're looking at porn mm. you're observing yeah we're on the internet now we're like if people mm. have a big dick they're like they That's literally what? have it out through their shorts and are pumping gas and they're a TikToker. It's yeah, like yeah and it's like yeah. having a, it's like a selection bias even if just having a nice body makes you more likely to become like a fitness influencer so you're then seeing this bias of all these people having these amazing bodies online of course people gravitate towards that cuz it's impressive. So there's a selection bias of what you're even looking at because of course it's like people are looking at a big dick or big boobs or big ass and then like seeing that as attractive and seeing it more and more often in porn and then it skews your perception. I've always wondered average. like if I had like an abnormally huge dick, like would I have to like in grade 12 be like, do I go to university or do I be on the porn <laughs> side? Like sometimes I'm like, that is like a weird part of having a huge dick. You're probably like, well, I could make a career out of this hog. Yeah. Or I could just keep it in my pants and show it to a few people and become an engineer. <laughs> like, like there does feel like I'm like I'm like I do not have a porn star dick, but I was always like if I was so blessed or some might say cursed, you would I have, have actually been like named like Liam Liam the Lasso Linklater porn star <laughs> or whatever. Anyways, this um, is a really popular. Surgery. Um, surgery. The name of this fake penis is called the Panuma. And just like, I think that the main takeaway again is that our concept of penis size is completely skewed because of the internet and that this is preying on people's insecurities and is not essential in any, for any reason or any way. And it's really dangerous mm -hmm. and it's not worth it. It's not yeah. worth it. And it's, it's sad because I think that like, obviously people's erection size and the way they feel about their erections for the most part is probably pretty low because it's hard to ha have that next week's episode self-esteem high self-esteem around it when you're watching all this mm -hmm. really biased and not accurate versions of dicks online mm -hmm. <laughs> it's funny it's when like so i don't want to oversimplify things but so much of problems with men can come with like insecurities of like their like literal dick size wait you know, what or just mean like these things distill down to like so we're, we have all these studies that say like this is the average dick size and so many men who have it bigger are still insecure about their dick size yeah and it's like this ultimate insecurity that you're not enough you know what i mean yeah. like it's the core belief that literally if only i had my dick was a, a few millimeter. centimeters more yeah. i would be happy i would be like worthwhile and it's like funny not funny but like that it comes down like everyone faces that pressure in many different ways but like these basic simplified insecurities that come back to being like the child in you. And like, you can yeah. see that expressed through like so much toxic masculinity, but like 
in like both straight and gay men and queer people all have these issues around. It's just like funny that dick size is such a thing. Yeah, because it does <laughs> seem so basic. Yeah, even it's like, like, especially when it's like completely functional, you know, and yeah. like even lots of women, lots of men would be like, the size doesn't matter that much to me. Like, in fact, like having a giant dick is actually like, yeah, you want to fit that in your mouth, you want to fit that in your ass, you want to fit that in your vagina. Like, it's yeah. actually painful. Yeah. So, of course, or it could be like, I don't even know. I'm like, are we going to get canceled? But like, it could just be like an ugly big dick. <laughs> You're the one who taught me that dicks can be ugly and not ugly. No, no, sorry. Not because either of ours are or aren't, but you're more like, you've talked about it to me more in a way where I've ever since been like, oh yeah, I kind of, yeah, I'd way rather have a nice dick than a big dick. I know, dick. but I think I was just such a horny little kid that I didn't even know there was such a <laughs> thing as like an unnice dick or an unnice tit. Like I just liked all tits, it's all because I'm prissy. Like I'm more, I'm much more like, ew. Like it has no, to be I like, know, and then I started like being well like, taken "Oh, care I guess I could judge it not just on like it's like, oh no, they all have their own vibe." And <laughs> I even, I even think about like the sort of cultural connotation of like big dick energy mm. probably also made a lot of guys insecure. Like, right. it's kind of, it's kind of being like, it's actually like super maybe problematic yeah. in the sense that it's like, oh, that person has confidence, has a, but it's, I think what it, sorry. Right, I has you. confidence, has this vibe that must be coming from the fact that he's internally so confident because mm. his dick's so big. Like right. it's like as if you have a big dick, then you're fine. Yeah, like that is. I actually... I feel like I understand the genesis behind that is actually to flip it on people who are hyperly toxic and to say if you're a shitty man it's probably because you have a small dick. Like, not that we uh, should actually be using dick size, but I think it's to... No, but that's still kind of messed up. No, it is, but I think it's to have <laughs> toxic men have to stop and think about why they're doing what yeah. they're doing. It is, like, maybe why it became this thing. It, yeah, it's true. Like, when, like, a motorcycle, like, revs by me, I'm like, small dick. Or yeah, like, yeah, it's like a compensatory yeah. action to be like, look, you're trying to overcompensate for something. And it's an easy way to put it in a zinger is, like, when it comes to dick size. Versus saying, you probably probably have some trauma around not feeling accepted and that you need to flash your wealth, your success, your these things at other people because you don't feel worthy. So it's all been distilled into like, you probably have a small dick. <laughs> wow. Wow. Yeah. But true. it's not at all necessarily true. Like there's lots of people with big dicks who are probably freaking assholes and not friendly and kind of annoying and brag and all these things. But there's something about a confident, kind man who you're like, he's not insecure is yeah. what I'm saying. Like yeah. he's not comp overcompensating for something. I can't like, I mean, we just have to talk. I can't get over Drake's dick <laughs> after, after Drake's dick. Cause it's also like, speaking of erections, like what's going on there? It was flopping around. Like, I don't even know. Like, an inorganic like it's not <laughs> what was it looking like everyone has to use like weird... i don't care to be honest <laughs> how can you not care well because i think if it was a woman we would be feeling weird about the everyone and every blog and every newspaper writing about okay it. well all of a sudden he's what like not a feminist or a feminist <laughs> backwards it's drake we yeah, are fine. definitely allowed to talk about his dick. No offense, and, and Drake, I guess like it, the people think that maybe he, he is a man, it, like, and he's so he's so he's is a man. like it's like we're all, like thinking about the concept of like comedy and punching up. Like if there's one person's dick, we can talk about his Drake. He's yeah, so, and it was big. It's not like people are making fun of no, it and it he's like, so like um oh he's so exorbitant and over the top and like so easy to make fun of because he's like the richest most powerful right. like kind of womanizing kind of like and like at this point sorry toronto like annoying like i'm a, <laughs> i i feel like i'm in, it's in his you can talk about his era it'd be different if he was like a different celebrity i think and it's insanely huge and it's like it's not erect it's like flopping around like it's such an odd video yeah it's like kind of like his corpus cover no size and even fall oh great that means I mean, it's getting yeah. bigger <laughs> that's true i yeah you just care more about pop culture than i do i'm just like because he not... didn't have big dick energy and then bam whoa yeah. <laughs> at least yeah. to me he did and it seemed like maybe he, was... he got that surgery Oh, oh my God, the Pena. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe he's Imagine one of the hand Panuma. clients. <laughs> he has Panuma energy, though. That Miami mm -hmm. face, that face mm -hmm. has been Botox. And we all know that the rumor has it he has a BBL. Oh, we all it. know that. Well, Megan way. the Stallion yeah. song hiss, she alludes to it. And I think it's like such a good diss. Can we move on um, to how to have a healthy erection? Yes. Are please. you done with talking about Drake's day? Yeah. Yeah, I guess so. I mean, I could go, I have about 10 more minutes on it, but we can move <laughs> on to that. 
Um, so my study was on, well, it was actually looking at erections in mice, which for whatever reason is so funny to me. Oh my but God. Apparently the basic, basic mechanisms between like a human erection and a mice erection and, are very similar Classic. In, in most, in most mammals actually like the kinds of like stuff we've already explained talking about the chambers move, like going the way it goes to the, the chamber of secrets, the chamber of secrets <laughs> enlarging, um, and the way that the nerves communicate and the hormones and stuff like that are all really similar. So inside of a penis you have fibroblasts which is like connective tissue and previously these were not there's not a lot of research on them like why are there so many in the penis what is their role great name uh but they believe they have an important role in like mediating the function of an erection so there's it's the most abundant cell type in a mouse penis, but I think in a human penis as well. But this study is on mice. Don't forget that. Um, and now they've realized they regulate blood flow in this study. So the study showed that fibroblasts mediate erection by taking up the neurotransmitter noradrenaline, which leads to the widening of blood vessels in the penis. Okay. So like how effective your penis is at enlarging depends on your fibroblasts. Okay. So then research were okay i'm trying to remember like what the ultimate point of the study was you're like but, eat bananas <laughs> no it, it kind of came down to how do you keep your fibroblasts like healthy and active yeah. it's like exercise like okay they realize the more you have boners the healthier your dick will be because you're stimulating those cells really i was so blood flow. wanted to talk about <laughs> at the end being like is there something like about having too many boners and jerking off all the time that then you're like getting all these like messed up veins, which is completely made up in my head. Not at all. But no, there you're exercising be, your dick. There could be other <laughs> things related to the mental side, right? Like if you're having issues because True. you can only get turned on in certain From conditions, porn maybe porn, maybe you have a fetish or whatever. Maybe there's ways that it's difficult for you to get turned on. That could be yeah. something by doing it too much, but they realize the fibroblasts function better when they're used more frequently. So this is exercising, AKA exercising your boner or exercising, AKA lifting weights and running around in circles on a track. They like the researchers compared it to like, if you run, your body gets better at using oxygen. Your muscles get better at like adapting to that so, environment. So get the, boners more. Get, get boner. The, the more wow. it's like use it or lose it. Like you're literally stimulating these fibroblasts and they're they're keeping up their activity oh. of being stimulated. You heard it um, here, folks. Yeah. Get as many boners as possible to keep the fibroblasts blasting. Yeah, and the interesting thing is a lot of mammals, <laughs> including chimps and gorillas, have a bone in their penis. Yeah, yeah, I know. But humans don't, and so they're like, this is probably even more, more important for humans because it relies so much on the blood wow. flow more than like a physical um, bone. Uh, interesting, but then the psycho active part yeah, of like, if so you're always looking at porn then yeah there's the other real, elements that's a serious issue too and older mice for exa example they realize have less fibroblasts so there's less blood flow yeah. that may be just like an aging thing um, but they said it could be possible to train the ability to get an erection to counteract imp impotence in the same wow. way as you can train your strength or fitness at the gym somewhere <laughs> like some white guy with like, dreads <laughs> in mexico is like leading like a boner class like it's starting or it's gonna be la like it's gonna start in la and well, everyone's gonna about, go and try and get boners and get their boners think bigger. about like um okay our bodies have these erections at night right like obviously yeah. like it's it's I just promoting mean, blood throws. Andrew Huberman's going to be on this. It's going to be the next ice bath. There's going to be yeah. like communal, <laughs> like every straight guy's going to get together with like 28 other straight guys and pay oh, $60 to it. like literally get boners. It's together. called erectricize. Ba damn. <laughs> Take that to the bank. Um, Honestly, I'm not kidding. We are in such an era of we start masculinity <laughs> online is so fascinating that every guy is just trying to optimize truly just like they're dick size whether that's through like steroids or all these different things that like you could make money on that and they're so unable to see how homoerotic everything they do is that if the 28 people sat on a mat and got boners together like 28 straight guys they still would be like it's not gay yeah they're like we're doing it for the girls yeah so that our boners get better so we go home with our leg for our ladies anyway I think, you know, that's a good to know. That is really good to know. Because I actually was, I had no research on it. I was kind of trying to be like, is it like, like possible? Bad to is have. it bad to have so many boners? So I think right now, at least the answer is no. But again, there's other 
impacting factors. If you're yeah. always watching porn when you jerk off, like maybe that is Which impacting. I do think a lot of people probably are doing. Mm-hmm. And then if they're getting into a sexual situation and feeling like things aren't working, it's like that could be because you're not like in this hyper-sexualized porn mm-hmm state that you're in full control of. Yeah, they're so used to. But it's important to remember it's not, as far as we know right now, it's not just because you've got a bone or a bunch that you might struggle with it later. Yeah. It's true. like, in, in fact, we have the opposite evidence right now is that the use of it is good. But obviously, brain brain gets involved. Brain has a lot of issues. So, Yeah, the largest sex organ in your body <laughs> is your brain. Um, I think that's all I have on yeah, erections. Like we can get into our what you learned this week and yeah. stuff. But um, that was fascinating. We'll take a little break and then we'll come back. Yeah. Boing, boing, okay. boing, boing, boing. <laughs> 